All right, so where we left off is I was defining a weird shape and making my own shape. So let me show you that again. Go back in the history before I used what's called the freeform pen tool. Okay. And the shape I need is that little drool of ketchup that breaks up the, the bun at the bottom. And so I use the freeform pen tool, which is above the text tool and is not the pen tool. The pen tool itself, we will learn how to handle in Illustrator its native program. But the freeform pen tool is a nice Photoshop edition that's really pretty intuitive because you just click and draw. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And this is a really wonky shape that I could build with the basic shapes. I could build with lots of ovals and transforming. But if I just click and draw all the way around it, I will do what's called defining a path. And that's fine, except we don't want to define paths here. Paths can be used as, as clipping masks. They can be used as selections. Um, I want to turn this into a custom shape, so I get a shape layer out of it. So what do I do? Once I've defined the path, then I right-click on it, and I say define custom shape. Then I have to name it. So I'm going to call this ketchup drool. Now, this is what's really bizarre. When you draw with the pen tool, it doesn't create a new layer for you. And it doesn't actually change your pixels at all. So now to actually create the shape, I have to go to the custom shape tool and then select from the menu and tools the very last one, which is the custom shape I made. But because I was dumb <laughs> and I made the custom shape, on a shape layer, now my custom shape is both of those shapes. So let me do it again. Let me go to a non-shape layer or make a new layer, right? But then I'd have to delete that. So I'm going to go to my, my background layer, use the freeform pen tool, click and drag, draw around this ketchup drool, doesn't need to be perfect. But I want to make sure that it's a closed path. And so you know it's a closed path. This is true in Illustrator as well, because when I get to the end, there'll be a little circle that appears next to the cursor. When it's a closed path, then I can right-click and say Define Custom Shape. I can name it. I'll call it Ketchup 2. And then I can go to the Custom Shape tool, click on the last one, Drag and drop it in. Ah. There we go. And it will make its own shape for me. And then I can fill it with a color. And in this case, I want the color red. I'll brighten it up a little bit. Okay. Now when I turn this off, why do I have green? <laughs> I am very confused. <laughs> All right, so that shape is coming from something else. What is that relish? Uh, I think it's. I think it's because I drew it on. So I'll use the auto select layer. Yeah, because I drew drew it on this one. So here's the thing, because I added it to this. There is no way to delete just this part of that shape layer and keep it a shape layer. And the, the only assignment is you got to keep them all a shape layer. So what do I do on top of this shape layer? I'm going to do the custom shape and do a new layer with my red. And I can transform it because it's just like a shape tool. And I'll have some complicated color theory where I have a green shadow on my red ketchup. And it'll just be amazing. 
But what I love is I can even warp my custom shape. So this gives you a lot of control of actually making your own shapes if you need to. And yet they're all shape layers still. So they're all vectors. And if I want to match a color of something else, like the tomato, I can just select right there. But I kind of like the more vibrant. But I'll show you how I can mess with that at the end. Let me show you that one more time. So how else can I use this? I go to the background layer or raster layer. Let me do the whole soda. Let me do the, the demons. I'm going to do them all as one layer. So I'm going to use the free form. Remember, it has to be a solid or a complete shape. So I'm going to draw through it all. Even though that tail is sticking out, I'm going to connect it. Now, the, the problem with this, and why you might not even want to do this, is it's really, really specific. And it loses the minimal elegance of just using geometric shapes that you warp. But some of you have compositions that aren't, don't lend themselves well to, to strong geometry. So I've defined it. Now I have to right click on it and say define custom shape. I'm going to call this demon one. Then I go to the custom shape tool. I find it. There it is. It's a nice little MC Escher kind of demon. I put it in and now it's a shape tool that I can fill with a color and move around. Ah, it's just underneath everything. Where do you go? There he is. Move him up and transform him. So it seems like you should just be able to draw the shape and it's a shape, but that doesn't work to keep it as a shape tool. And these are some of the, the weird, that's the reason we'll, we'll need Illustrator for vectors. Vectors can be hard to work with. Right. But see how that looks very different than these kind of shapes. Right. But it's still a vector and it would scale up perfectly with any environment. So let's do that with the other demon. I'll call this demon booty. But remember, I don't want to start on a shape layer. I want to start on a background layer. And I'll generalize a little bit. And I can't do undercuts with this shape, right? So those holes in the tail, I'm not able to do that. I would have to layer over yellow circles for that, which isn't hard to do. Right click, define custom shape, demon two, pick a color for it. Oh, I have to use the custom shape tool. Pick demon two. Put it in there. Pick a color for it and then move it up so I can see it. All right, and then I can shape it to work a little bit better. So remember, this is an exercise. I just want you to have a composition made only of shape tools, inspired by an outside reference. That is all. It is hard to make it look good, <laughs> but it really makes you pay attention to, just like if you were trying to match a Picasso by cutting out construction paper and layering it up, it's the same skill set, and it teaches you the same lessons. There's a lot to it. So the problem with using the, the custom or the freeform pen is it's pretty addictive. And I think, well, I want to get that perfect shape now. But the nice thing about keeping things kind of minimal is that I can just use the ellipse and then just warp it and kind of stretch it out to make these holes in the tail. And so don't worry if you're not matching the, the shape and size directly, right? That's not always what matters. In fact, that shape looks messy as anything. But in contrast to like the perfect circle or the circle behind it, it's kind of interesting to have those. 
and they're just things we can do. But for the rest, I'm going to keep it to the shape tools. Uh, there's also the rounded rectangle tool, which I don't use too much, but it might work well for the soda can here or the soda cup. But down underneath, pick a color. Let's just do white for the moment and then transform it. And this is a great way to use distort or a great example of where I want to use distort because I can just move those corners where I want them. Make the hard edge shape and then warp out to curve the top. So Command-T, right-click, warp, and then just stretch the top into a curve. Maybe soften out those corners a little bit. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, now I'm going to move that down behind my hamburger, behind my demons. All right, and now I just need a straw. I can use the rounded rectangle for that as well. Now, this is a fun example. The straw is easy. I just use a rounded rectangle. I command T and tilt it. Done. But notice in the composition how the straw is glowing yellow. So this is another thing we can do with our vector shapes. we can give them properties. So if I select that straw, the way I like to do it is to actually, just like we did with the um, cartoon jumble, double click on the, the title of the layer and you'll get the layer styles. And I'm going to give it an outer glow. And then I get to pick, I want it normal. I want its opacity to be around 75. I want its spread to be bigger. I want its size to be, yeah, about there. Maybe actually it's size smaller, but it's spread bigger. Nope, reverse that. Spread smaller, size bigger. It makes it softer. And then what color do I want? Well, I want it to be this kind of yellow, right? So now I have a glowing straw, and I just got to move that under my cup. And then I realize, oh, I can use that exact same effect on my ellipse. Double click. Outer Glow, it will remember my settings, but I want this size to be even bigger. But not so big that it's not soft anymore. Are they still all vector layers? Yes, they are. It's just now two of them have effects on them. Does that make sense? All right, so I have two minutes. I'm gonna do something really quick for the bed <laughs> and the people. I'm gonna keep this super simple. Just use the custom shape, fluffy cloud, wonky flower tool. Do a big shape, transform it, warp it, because it's kind of organic looking. Push and pull it like this. It's like a Moreau painting, some sort of bioorganic form and I'm going to pick a color for it bed color and then I'm going to do another one that's this kind of weird floating baby spirit thing <laughs> the boy's spirit leaving his body and entering the fast food it's an odd painting that Robert Williams did here I'm going to warp it Because we're at crunch time. We just want to turn something in that mimics the composition. Okay, now let me adjust some colors. Let me adjust some placement. The bed needs to go over the top of the shadow, right? And the figure has to go over the top of the bed. And the bed should be a lighter color, but not too light. And now I'm going to turn off my background layer and my copy at the top. And I'm going to look at my reference in preview and kind of squint at both of them and see what am I missing. And that's how we'll judge. <laughs> 